Welcome to this educational program. This module discusses vesicourethral reflux, or VUR. This information is taken from a recent review of the medical literature and attempts to be as comprehensive as possible. However, it may not necessarily reflect the experience of your healthcare provider or the specifics of your situation. This program is strictly informational in nature, and no attempt is made to provide opinion or recommendation. Please feel free to view this presentation as many times as necessary. You may also use the player to repeat slides or skip through them in any order you wish. Urine is made in the kidneys and travels down a long, soft, flexible tube called the ureter to the bladder where it is stored. During urination, the bladder, which is mostly made of muscle, contracts and expels the urine out of the body through the urine channel or urethra. The ureter enters and connects to the bladder at a location called the ureterovesical junction. The way that this connection is structured creates a flap-like valve that prevents the backflow of urine up the ureters while the bladder is storing or expelling urine. Vesicourethral reflux, or VUR, occurs when this flap-like valve that is positioned where the ureter meets the bladder does not work properly. Normally, urine that is in the bladder can only flow one way, out through the urethra when a person urinates. When the valve isn't working properly, Urine is also allowed to flow backwards, up through one or both ureters, and potentially into the kidneys when the child contracts the bladder or urinates. This affects about one child in 100. Untreated VUR can potentially lead to serious health problems. While urine in the bladder is normally sterile, the area around the vagina, penis, or anus is not. Bacteria from these areas can enter the urethra and travel upwards to the bladder, causing a bladder infection called cystitis. In a person with VUR, this bacteria can then continue to travel upwards with the urine into the ureters and sometimes into the kidneys, causing a kidney infection called pyelonephritis. Both types of infections are classified as urinary tract infections, or UTIs. However, a kidney infection is much more serious than a bladder infection. A kidney infection can lead to kidney damage or scarring, high blood pressure later in life, and even kidney failure which would require dialysis or a kidney transplant. Furthermore, scarring of the kidneys in women of childbearing age increases complications in pregnancy, such as preeclampsia, a condition of dangerously high blood pressure, pyelonephritis, and preterm labor. There are two types of reflux. The first, called primary VUR, occurs when a child is born with an impaired valve at the point where the ureter and bladder connect. This type of VUR can sometimes get better or even disappear as the child grows. The chance of this happening depends on the grade of reflux. However, in the first five years of life, over 15% will resolve per year. The second type, called secondary VUR, occurs when there is a blockage somewhere along the urinary system. The blockage could be caused by an abnormality of urination where the urinary sphincter, or valve muscle, does not properly relax to allow for easy urination. While perfectly healthy children can develop this situation, various spinal cord conditions such as spina bifida, spinal cord trauma, or even spinal tumors may lead to high-pressure urination due to damage to the nerves that control the bladder. The resulting high pressures required to urinate cause the valve at the ureterovesical junction to pop open and reflux occurs. VUR is overall more common in girls than boys, although in infancy it is more commonly identified in boys. It is most often identified when the child is two or three years old. It also tends to run in families. Secondary reflux may occur at an older age, after a bladder infection, or in children who do not learn to urinate properly, meaning that they do not properly relax their urinary sphincter muscle when they urinate. As mentioned, it may also develop in those with various spinal cord conditions. VUR is diagnosed through a combination of a medical interview or history a physical examination, and imaging tests such as a cystogram, ultrasound, and nuclear renogram. Each of these will be explained. VUR is usually diagnosed after the development of a UTI, or if a child is having trouble urinating, such as urgency, dribbling, or wetting their clothes or bed. Higher than normal blood pressure and poor weight gain may also be observed. If a young child has a history of bladder or kidney infections, the possibility of VUR should always be investigated. A thorough physical exam will be done including a general assessment, check for normal growth and development, 
and an exam of the abdomen and lower back to look for a distended bladder, large kidneys, and any signs of underlying congenital abnormalities. The primary test for VUR is the cystogram. There are two types of cystograms, the voiding cystourethrogram, also called a VCUG, and the nuclear cystourethrogram, or NVCUG. Both tests are similar and require the placement of a tube or catheter into the bladder through the urinary channel, or urethra, through which contrast dye is passed into the bladder to see if reflux is present. The child will also be asked to urinate or void during the procedure, since reflux sometimes only occurs during voiding. Although this may sound scary for the child, most do very well and do not require any medication for the test. A cystogram takes about 20 minutes. An ultrasound may also be performed, not to diagnose VUR, but to monitor the size of the kidney, ureters, and bladder, and to see if there is any swelling present. This test is non-invasive and simply involves passing a device called a transducer across the abdomen to visualize the internal organs with sound waves. Finally, a nuclear renal scan helps to monitor kidney function and to see if kidney scarring is present. This test may be performed to investigate whether any kidney damage has occurred. It requires injection of a dye through a catheter in a vein and the taking of pictures over several hours as the dye moves through the body to the kidneys. As noted, normally urine flows in one direction only, from the kidney, through the ureter, and into the bladder. A cystogram can be used to determine the severity or grade of reflux. In grade 1 VUR, the urine refluxes part way up the ureter. In grade 2 VUR, the urine backs up all the way through the ureter to just reach the kidney. In grade 3 VUR, the backup of urine causes minor dilatation or stretching of the walls of the ureter and part of the kidney where urine collects. In grade 4 VUR, the dilatation of the ureter and part of the kidney worsens. The final grade is 5, and at this level of VUR, the ureter and part of the kidney becomes extremely stretched and twisted. VUR may be managed through a combination of self-care, medical therapies, and surgical intervention where necessary. The goal of self-care and medical therapy is to prevent urinary tract infections while allowing time for the child to hopefully grow out of his or her reflux. When this is not likely, and if UTIs occur, then surgery is recommended to correct the underlying problem. While VUR cannot be prevented, urinary tract infections, or UTIs, can. The goal, therefore, is to protect the kidneys by preventing a UTI from developing at all. There are several things your child can do to decrease the likelihood of a UTI. These include drinking several glasses of water daily, avoiding the use of nylon underwear, maintaining good personal hygiene, and toilet training as usual when the child is ready. Encourage your child to urinate every two to three hours, even if he or she does not feel the need to go, and avoid holding in urine or rushing at the toilet. Taking measures to prevent constipation is also very helpful. Your child's doctor will likely prescribe prophylactic or preventative antibiotics. These are antibiotics given to prevent an infection rather than to treat an existing infection and are typically given once a day, preferably at bedtime, for a long period of time, sometimes years. If the child remains infection-free, a routine cystogram and ultrasound are performed every one or two years to monitor growth of the urinary organs and to evaluate for persistent reflux. The lower the grade of reflux, the more likely it is to disappear as the child grows. If reflux does heal on its own, the average age is 6 or 7. If your child has very high-grade reflux or recurrent infections, even with prophylactic antibiotics, and if the reflux does not get better, or if it gets worse, surgery may be recommended. There are two main surgical approaches. Reimplantation of the ureter is surgery performed through the lower abdomen to detach the ureter from the bladder and then reattach it in a stronger fashion to create a better valve mechanism. The technique is very successful at correcting the reflux. A hospital stay of one to three days is required. While not quite as successful as surgical reimplantation of the ureter, a less invasive approach also works very well. This approach is done through a small telescope called a cystoscope, which is the same size as the catheter used to perform a VCUG. The procedure involves injection of a substance where the ureter and bladder meet to create a new flap. Both of these procedures are discussed in more detail in other modules. 
In a child with a history of VUR, lifelong checks of kidney function should be conducted. These include measures of height and weight, blood pressure, and periodic urinalysis. Also, because VUR is more likely to occur in families, any siblings of a child with VUR should also be assessed. Because a bladder infection can lead to a kidney infection in a person with VUR, it is very important to take any symptoms of a UTI seriously. If you notice in your child an unexplained fever, discolored or foul-smelling urine, pain on urination, frequent or urgent urination, you should contact your child's physician. It could mean that the antibiotics are not working and that a change in treatment is required. Treatment to prevent a UTI is very important, especially for someone with VUR. Antibiotics must be taken every day until the reflux is gone. Regular follow-up with your child's physician is critical to ensure that either the VUR is getting better, or if not, that more aggressive measures be taken. In summary, bladder infections can lead to kidney infections in people with VUR. Because of the seriousness of kidney infections, it is imperative to prevent UTIs from occurring. This is done by taking daily prophylactic antibiotics and having your child undergo regular medical follow-up. Most young children with low-grade VUR will experience a correction of the problem as they grow to age 6 or so. Higher grade VUR, or persistent UTI despite the use of antibiotics, may warrant surgical correction. There is a high degree of success with surgical procedures to treat VUR. Remember, your child's doctor is there to help. You can help too by ensuring your child practices good hygiene and drinks plenty of water, takes all prescribed medication, and attends the regularly scheduled tests for VUR. Even though the VUR may be gone while your child is young, Lifelong follow-up is recommended to ensure that the kidneys function as optimally as possible. These resources may help you find further information or support about your condition. We sincerely hope that this module has furthered your understanding of vesicoureteral reflux. We wish you the best for the future, and thank you once again for viewing this educational program.